Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bible in a Year, day 38. Oh man, I cannot wait for the things that we are going to be talking about today. Listen, as you watch the Bible in a Year Reading Challenge, Reading Challenge Instagram Live today, here is something that is going to be clear to you. Lynn Rydell's here, Edward Jensen, you're in the house, glad you're here. Robert Zama is just now tuning in. He's going to be my guest on today's Bible in a Year, Day 38, Instagram Live at 515. Friends, today, as we discuss the Bible in a Year reading challenge, here is one thing that is going to be infinitely clear to you. There is great benefit in reading the Old Testament, New Testament, Psalm, and the Proverbs all at the same time. Here's the reason why. Because you will end up seeing that the character of God and the message that God is trying to deliver to you and I is streamlined all the way through the Bible. It is in the Old Testament, it is in the New Testament, it is in the Psalms, it is in the Proverbs. And today, friends, we discover some things that are so amazing, so exciting, so riveting. You're not going to want to miss it. Naomi from Australia, hello. Lissa, hello. Excited that you're here too. Oh, Lynn Rydell says, yes, I saw that today it is clear, it is it is abundantly clear that um, what we were learning today is, it. You, you see it in the Old Testament, New Testament, Psalm and Proverbs, there is this beautiful message that is being proclaimed all the way through the entire Bible. It's the same message. Okay, we got to get Robert on here. Let me see if I can... Get him to join. Where are you at, Robert? We're going to find you here. I'm going to request that you join the live. How do I get Robert on the live? Do, do, do. Um, he might be trying to figure out how to record it right now. <laughs> okay, I'm looking for the button to where... Robert, can you just shoot me a message in the chat so I can highlight you? And I think that'll allow me to... Oh, there we go. Uh, Robert Zama is requesting to join your live video, except here we go. Hmm. Hey, while I'm <laughs> there's my brother. <laughs> I just I found the button beside my name that says, I know, I, you know, listen, you and I both listen. Here's the thing. We know God is on the throne if we can navigate technology. Amen. Right. Amen. God is there. Okay, my mom is saying hello, Lissa is saying hello, we've got six or seven people in the chat right now. Rob, today I just want to tell you something about the Bible in a Year Reading Challenge before we get started and I start asking you questions. Sure. Today, on the Bible in a Year Reading Challenge, when I was going through my readings, and I think you probably experienced this also, mm -hmm. it is mind-blowing how reading about the sanctuary and then reading the, the New Testament uh, parables that Jesus is talking about and then seeing what day, what's happening in the psalm and the pro and I'm just like how can people not know that's amazing that the god of the old testament is the god of the new testament is the god that david is praying and yeah. is the god that the holy spirit is pointing to through wisdom in the proverbs uh, it is yeah it is just i was studying today i could hardly wait to get on the live <laughs> I was too. I was doing the same thing. When I saw the, the connections there, what we're going to go through between Exodus and Matthew, I was like, what? Are you serious? I thought you specifically chose that. Just no, 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 no. no, 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 no. This is just, we are just working through. I mean, it's just, yeah. I, this is what's beautiful about it, Rob. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. I, I'm not even kidding you. I did not specifically choose the breaks so that it would just line it up so that the topics would do this. Yeah. All through doing the Bible in a Year reading challenge, when you're doing Old Testament, New Testament, Psalms, and Proverbs, when you're doing this Bible reading plan, friends, for all of you that are out there watching on Instagram Live right now, you are going to see that the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament, the God of the, the God that David is praising in the Psalms, and the God that the Holy Spirit is pointing to in the Proverbs. I'm just telling you guys, listen, this journey of going through the Bible will increase your faith by seeing that over thousands of years, that holy men were moved by the Holy Spirit to write about God, and they all agreed with each other that they were talking about the same God. It is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, and just, might I add, just before we uh, we have prayer, we jump into this. 
I want to actually give people a chance to know who you are in just a moment here. But might I add, here's the amazing thing. We know that the scriptures were written over thousands of years, right? We also know that they are the most historically accurate document. Without on Twitter. Nobody will contest that. Not even nope. atheists. Nope. People look at it, they go, no. This is literally when you look at the, the most original, the oldest uh, versions that we have in the Hebrew and the Greek, yeah. and we compare it to what it is now. This is the most accurately preserved historic document. Yeah. It paints a picture of God across 4,000 years. It is just mind-blowing what we have yeah. happening here. Okay, so Robert Zama. Yes. How did we meet? Can you please, can you let our audience know? How is this guy? I have this evangelist friend <laughs> out of Portland who is suddenly on the Bible in a year, uh, reading yeah. Challenge Instagram Live today at 515. We're getting ready to share with people what God has revealed to us to, through today's reading. But before we pray, okay. who are you and how did we meet? Let, let the people know. So I was invited by the Oregon Conference to come and be the conference evangelist in 2020. I arrived in February 2020. I was pastoring before that in Toronto, Canada, or very close to Toronto, Canada. And when I arrived, everything shut down, uh, literally a week later, you know, everything was closed. So all my plans to do evangelism in person throughout the conference kind of went out the window at that point. So uh, we tried to do uh, an online version of an evangelistic series, at, like almost right away. And when we started the series, we thought, hey, let's team up with uh, some people at Andrews University to learn about how to Maybe we can use their knowledge, some uh, you know, people who are really good at social media and networking and, and uh, getting the word out that way. We wanted to partner with a couple of you, and we did. We partnered with you and one other person on the, this online evangelistic effort. We've never done anything like it before as a team. We just got together, and you were there. We had a couple of meetings. You helped us um, I, with a number of things to on the comments section, de, uh, following up with people who were asking questions. There were some other things that you did there, but that was kind of my first exposure to Stephen Farr. <laughs> and uh, we worked really well together through that online series, uh, navigating something we've never done before. Yeah. But uh, And that, now you're here. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, and what I hear you saying, what I because I've graduated now from Andrews University and we work together now, please tell us that, first of all, I want to say what I hear you saying is this. You came to the Oregon Conference to be the conference evangelist. You had all of these plans. Satan disrupted it. Mm -hmm. But through Satan's disruption, a blessing was created That's right. because when I was a little boy, eight years old, God put it on my heart that someday I was going to grow up to be a world evangelist. And then the next thing you know, here I am living the dream, working with the Oregon Conference Evangelist, helping you to create an online evangelistic effort where we were going to be able to, the, for the, during COVID-19, are we going to let the gospel not be preached to the world? No. God is going to end up bringing a blessing out of a curse. Yeah. What's amazing about this, brother, is um, I was on there living the dream, getting to work with you. And then I remember... I came to Portland to preach at the Hoodview Church where I got my start 16, 17 years earlier. And you were in the area and you happened to show up. And you were there for my sermon that I preached right after um, graduating from Andrews University. Yep. And at the time you mentioned to me, you said, you know what, it would be great to work with you. And I'm thinking, Robert Zama, the Oregon Conference evangelist, wants to work with me. This is great. You know and so here we are. Here we are. We're working together. Here we are. Listen, I felt the same way about you. I mean, I heard so much about you and your online presence is amazing. So when I heard, hey, he's coming to pastor in, in Oregon, I'm like, sweet. You know, we get to work together. And I was Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, somebody posted uh, their T-E-T-I-A-S. -E I'm not sure who that is, but they said, yay, Toronto. I'm, I'm wondering if they've ever been any. Oh, yeah, that's Melinda. OK, she's from Syracuse, New York right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's Melinda. So okay. she's from New York. Um, she's saying, yay, Toronto, Canada. So um, she's favorable to Canadians. Is she from Canada? Melinda, I did not know this about you. Melinda, can you please enlighten our uh, evangelist friend, Robert Zama here? Are you from Canada? Are you, uh, are you a fan of the Canadians? Are you from Canada originally? What's going on here? Okay, we'll wait for her, her answer in the chat. Sure. Okay, Robert, okay. So now tell me, what's the name of this web page that you and I worked on together, oh, just so that people know? On the web page? Oh, she's saying, okay. So, Melinda's saying there's a large Hungarian community in Toronto. Yeah. So she loved Toronto. 
She has, uh, she is Hungarian herself, so she's just loving on the people that she knows there that are uh, also Hungarian as well. So, so I'm Hungarian too. <laughs> so, oh, Robert Zom is Hungarian. I'm Melinda, half, I'm half Hungarian, half Romanian. Actually, that's where I was. Born. We're learning things. This is exciting. Okay, see, I didn't even know. I worked with you all this time. I was just excited you were an evangelist. That's where it ended for me. I'm like. Robert Zama, Oregon Conference Evangelist. You want to work with me? I was done. I mean, you you had me unraveled. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's like, what? Yeah, I'm I'm Hungarian, so I know the Hungarian group there very well. Yeah, I spent a lot of time together with them. So yeah. Okay, now tell me what was the uh, remind me. Let people know the web page that you were working on the uh, online platform that we were doing evangelism together on. Yeah, it's Max. Oh boy, Ooh. there was a couple of them at that time. We which made a few changes since then. But the main one that we were working on uh, was maxlifeevents.com. Max okay. Life. So that's, that has a whole host of series and uh, things that we've been working on. But yeah, <laughs> we've been traveling in a couple of different uh, directions at light, light warp speed because of where everybody's trying to keep up with COVID right now. It's quite an interesting um, uh, quite an interesting time that we live in. But uh, yeah, we're just trying to pivot and partner with churches and really help uh, churches reach their community through through online means. So uh, yeah. Well, I love, I love the work you're doing. I was excited to be part of it. I'm glad to hear that it continues to evolve and change. Uh, brother, let's, uh, let's say a prayer. Sure. I mean, we could, you and I, we could just have fun. We could chat all day. But there's stuff we want to get to in this Bible and your reading challenge. So let me ask you to say a prayer for us. And then I'm just going to dive in. I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to share some of my thoughts and insights. And here's how we can do this. Um, let's go through from the Old Testament reading. So we'll start in Exodus. And then we'll go to the New Testament. Because I know that there's major connections there we're going to want to talk about. And then we can look at the Psalm and the Proverbs last. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. Yep. Okay. Go ahead and pray for us and we'll get started. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the ability to connect like this through our, our online means and that we can form a community. And we pray that as we open your word, that you would be with us, that you would help us understand and uh, help us to find those nuggets and to apply them to our lives. We know that you're going to be with us. We expect your spirit to speak to us. And we just pray that our hearts would be open now. Uh, in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, now just before I dive into the questions that I will be asking our evangelist, Robert Zama, he is out of the Oregon Conference right now. He is a Hungarian-Canadian. Okay, so for all of you people out there, give some love to our brother uh, that are excited. One, that he's a Hungarian. So we have some Hungarians on the chat that are connected to Toronto, Canada as well. That's exciting. Yeah. Before we dive into this, let me just remind all of you this. Every single one of the Bible in a Year reading uh, challenge Instagram lives that are going to be done, all 365 of them are posted to the Pendleton Adventist Church YouTube channel. So what do you need to do if you want to do the Bible in a Year reading challenge and you haven't started it yet? <gasps> Look, it's not too late. You can start the Bible in a Year reading challenge any day of the year. Here's why. You go to the Pendleton Adventist Church YouTube channel. You click subscribe. You find Bible in a Year reading challenge day one. In the description of the video, it literally tells you what you need to read, the questions that you can be asking, the journaling you can do. It's all there for you. It's so easy. And then you just don't try to do all the videos at once, friends. If you want to if you want to Bible flicks and chill, I'm not going to tell you not to. But listen, it's better for you if you Bible flicks and chill one Instagram live a day, one reading a day, one journaling a day. Why? Because we want to soak in the scriptures, don't we, Rob? Yes, of course. We, we, we don't want to try to read the whole Bible at once. I mean, you can get something that your mind gets fatigued. What you want to do is you want to do a little bit of the Old Testament, a little bit of the New Testament, a little bit of the Psalm and the Proverbs. Now, before we dive into this and I start asking you questions, I'm going to say one more thing quickly, because I know I say this almost every day. Those of you that are on the Bible and you're reading challenge every day, you're like, Stephen, you say the same thing. It's because I don't want anyone to miss out on a chance to do this. I want anyone and everyone who ever comes to this if it's their first time here, I want them to have a chance to be a part of the Bible in a Year reading challenge. Here's what I'm going to tell you. If you want to get the Bible in a Year reading plan, okay, you can go to my Instagram, click the link in my bio. It is a link tree link. You're going to see there, link tree. You click the link. I'll even post a story for you guys after the live so you can see. It's so easy to do. Click the link, and you'll see on there, Bible in a Year reading plan. 
eight and a half by 11 if you only have a printer that prints eight and a half by 11 or if you can get to a printer that prints 11 by 17 you can get one of the bigger bible plans okay and right on here is the instructions right on the very first page of the bible in a year reading plan whether you do the eight and a half by 11 or the 11 by 17 is the questions the journaling everything that you need to know about the bible in a year you can start today friends i want to tell you something if you do the bible in a year reading challenge if you're praying for the Holy Spirit every day and you're reading a little bit of the Old New Testament Psalms and the Proverbs, you're asking the questions, you're asking God to give you wisdom and discernment, you're journaling, you are going to grow in your understanding and your relationship with God, you are going to be blessed and you're going to become a blessing to others. It's going to, it's going to change your life. I've been doing this now the entire Bible in a year. I've done the New King James Version, the New Living Translation, the NIV. I started in the King James. I didn't ever finish that one. It was a little bit difficult. Now I'm doing the English Standard Version because I am going through. Thanks. So, so I, yeah, we're, we're literally just going through the Bible over and over and over. And I want to tell you guys something. Every single time I've ever done the Bible in a year, I grow in my relationship with God exponentially. I learn things about God I've never seen before. The, the vast knowledge of God's love and his character and who he is never ends. All right. Robert Zama, are we ready? Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, you know how to be a part of Bible in Your Reading Challenge. We have our special guest, the evangelist Robert Zama from the Oregon Conference with us live tonight. And I want to ask you a question from our Exodus reading. Let me go ahead and flip my camera around. Let's just go ahead and review. What did we read today? Okay. Dun, dun, dun. We are on day 38 of the Bible in a Year Reading Challenge, and we read Exodus 26, verse 1 through 27, 21, Matthew 25, 1 through 30, Psalm 31, 1 through 8, and Proverbs 8, 1 through 11. Oh, look, I already read that. I can check the box. See how fun this is? Every little reading you do, you got a spot to check. Okay, here we go. Boom. Let me click back around. I have a question for you, Robert. When you were reading your Exodus reading today, was there one of the questions in our Bible in a Year reading challenge that you were able to answer? Right off the bat? Oh, boy. Yeah, right off the bat. When you were going through the reading... Yeah. Was there something that you discovered or you learned you've never seen before? Was there something that you learned about God's character? Did you feel like you yeah. you learned something that would cause you to grow in your relationship with God? Yeah. Talk to me about that. Yeah, it's a combination of a number of things. It's, and it's, it's that connection between all of these. I would, I mean, Exodus talks about the tabernacle, building the tabernacle. And really there was... God spared no expense in, in building that tabernacle. And it was all consisted of the finest gold, the finest materials. It was absolutely beautiful. Something that I've often overlooked as I read through this, this time that I caught was that there was actually an image of two cherubim in the veil. And it was just one of those things that are easy to kind of overlook, but it just brought me back a little bit to Genesis when, um, when there was a cherub that uh, guarded the entrance to the Garden of Eden and the importance of the cherubim throughout the Bible and the position that they hold and what they do. They are protectors. They, you know, there's so, there was uh, an element there of surprise when I read it. I, I thought, oh, that's interesting. I always kind of, passed over that I never thought about those cherubim on on the veils um, something else that stood out to me was again just the power of the very first thing that you saw as soon as you entered through the courtyard you entered through that to the opening into the tabernacle and the first thing that you would see is is the bronze altar and every time a person an Israelite would walk through that veil and would see that there it would always remind them of one simple truth that there is no forgiveness of sin without sacrifice. Mm. That alone was always pointing to Jesus. And when Jesus mm -hmm. died on the cross, he fulfilled that. And so we look back and we're thankful for that. But for the people in Israel, you know, something else that, that stood out to me is nowadays for people who are meat eaters and in many parts of the world, uh, whenever you smell the smell of burning a meat for a, for let's say a barbecue or anything like that people would pass by and smell that and would be like mm, that that smells good that's a barbecue but back in the t in Israel's time anytime you smelled burning meat it was a reminder that sin 
happened and someone was offering a sacrifice for the sin that just happened. Mm. It was just a, a kind of a neat paradigm shift for me when I read through this. I mean, there's so many things, Stephen, about this portion of scripture that I could talk about. These little tiny nuances and these things kind of popped out to me that I never noticed before. Yeah, I love the detail in the temple. And here's one of the things I wanted to talk about. It was interesting when you mentioned the cherubim that's on the curtains, okay? Because that's on multiple of the curtains, right? And what's really cool about that is, is that you have the cherubim on the ark, right? Yep. And the presence of God, in yesterday's reading, we learned that the, president, the, the presence of God appears between the cherubim over yep. the mercy seat. That's right. And under the mercy seat is what? The testimony. Yeah. Okay. What's amazing about this is, is God the Father gave God the Son to come down into the world yep. to die, right? And so the testimony of Jesus is under the mercy seat and the presence of God that's made possible mm -hmm. by Christ's sacrifice. The fact that Christ can dwell in among us and through us now in our world is all made possible by Christ. And... The really neat thing, and I'll just jump forward to this. I'm actually going somewhere where I wasn't planning on going right away. But the really neat thing that you see right at the end of today's reading, Exodus 27, verses 20 and 21, is you see the lamp and the oil for the lamp. And what does it say there? It says, you shall command the people of Israel that they bring to you pure beaten olive oil for the light, that a lamp may regularly be set up to burn yeah. in the tent of meeting outside the veil, that is before the testimony. Aaron and his sons shall tend it from evening to morning before the Lord. It shall be a statute forever to be observed throughout their generations by the people of Israel. Yeah. Now, here's what's beautiful about this. The oil in the Bible represents the Holy Spirit. Right. Right. And if you think about it, 2 Corinthians 3.18 says that we actually want to pray for the veil as we behold God's word as in a mirror. We're changed from glory to glory to be more like him. And in 2 Corinthians, it talks about the veil that is removed by the Holy Spirit for us to be able to see clearly the testimony of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I had never before noticed that right outside the veil is the lamp that's burning with the pure beaten olive oil that is to burn day and night before the veil. Why? Because as the light is burning, it's going to create a translucent effect for you to be, see, to be able to see through the veil that you're going to be able to see dimly mm -hmm. the Ark of the Covenant with the testimony of Jesus below the mercy seat and above it, what? The very presence of God that can dwell among the people because of what? The sacrifice of Jesus and because of the Holy Spirit making God's presence possible here on earth. Totally amazing to me that I saw that. But here's something that I wanted to point out quickly, you were talking about the detail, right? Yeah. The, the crazy amount of detail. Here's something I noticed. In the center, when you're thinking about the holy place and the most holy place, and then the courtyard and the curtains, and you talked about the altar that you see when you first come in, right? Okay. The very center of the temple is made of the finest things. Yeah. And then as you go out, oh, yes. yeah. it goes from gold to silver, to bronze. To bronze, yeah. Right, to the point where the altar way out on the outside is bronze, and then the curtains on the outside have the bronze clasps and all of that and the silver vases and everything. But at the center is the gold, and here's something that I realized. Okay, if we're looking for a practical application and what can, what can we learn, you know, like, because I don't know about you, let me ask you just before I say this, have you ever read all this stuff on the sanctuary in Exodus and been like, okay, there's all this detail about the sanctuary, but what can I actually... How do I apply this to my life, right? How can how does knowing all of this about the temple, how does knowing this about the tabernacle and the courtyard and all of the stuff in it help me to have a relationship with God that's more clear? Mm -hmm. Here's what I saw today. You know how in our Christian life, um, change comes from the inside out? Rob, you know what I saw today? I saw, as I saw the detail of the gold at the center, yeah. and then the silver curtain around it, and then the bronze on the, what I was, I was hearing God saying is, Stephen, the change that I want to do in your life comes by me sitting on the throne of your heart, the way my presence sat on that mercy seat. The change that God wants to do, us being able to know him, comes from what the testimony of Jesus Christ has made possible for you and me. Yeah. What is that? 
that the God of the universe that love, Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, that the law of God can be written on my heart and mind, and it's the most beautiful part, the thing that changes me and grows me in my relationship with God is when the word of God that we're doing every day, every day in the Bible in a year whoo, is changing me from the inside out. Yeah. The same way that the detail of the temple, the gold, all of the most precious things are right in the middle where God is. Mm -hmm. And from that place in Israel, his presence is changing yeah. the whole community from the middle of the community out. Mm -hmm. I had never realized before that all of the really most beautiful details of the temple start at the center. And then as you go out, even the garments of the priests, if you're paying attention, you know, when you're reading it, the, 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 the most high priest has the ephod with all of the stuff and his clothes are just, but then the priests that are serving in the outer courtyard, their, their robes are way more plain. So the closer you get to the present, yeah. the, the detail and God's, God's power changes us from the inside out. So that was my thought on it for the Exodus reading. Now, was there, um, did you have any comments on any of the other stuff in Exodus? Uh, yeah, I think your, your ringer is uh, going, yeah, there's a, there's a. There's Somehow a, I lost this. Here. Hold I, on I did pick up exactly what you, you mentioned as well, because I was getting to that, that point. Um, but also just the fact that there's the bronze altar. The first thing you saw was the bronze altar. Sometimes, you know, as people sinned, they would bring their prized possession, their unblemished lamb, to the, uh, to the tabernacle for it to be sacrificed. And sometimes I thought, you know what? There are times when I enter into the presence of God and I feel like, you know, what are those things in my life that are so precious that maybe I wouldn't be willing to sacrifice? Maybe God is calling me to sacrifice something that means a lot to me that could be in the way or could be uh, something that's, that's stopping me from fully committing to God. And so that also ties in very well with Matthew because you have this story of, of the, uh, the wise virgins, the ten wise virgins were right at the beginning and how amazing that ties into the tabernacle and to the, to the, um, there's so many nuances there that are, are pretty neat if you, if you follow them through. So we talk a little bit about the, the parable of the, the wise uh, virgins, and it's talking about how they didn't have enough oil. And you talked about the Holy Spirit. So we know that's the Holy Spirit. But the way that th that whole thing happens is that there are, in, in, back in those times, and, and even in, in Jewish times today, a man would go, a groom, would go back to his place, and he would prepare a sort of a, a bridal chamber for him and his wife. When he was ready, he would go to pick up his uh, bride. And while he's coming, weddings typically in the Jewish uh, faith would, would happen in, in the dark at night. And so when he would be coming about halfway into town, the bridesmaids would see him coming from afar and would trim their lamps, would arise, would run back to, to, to run to get him and to show him the way to the, where the bride is. And so one of the things that it says there that they do is they get up and they trim their lamps. And of course, that trimming of the lamp to me symbolizes getting rid of the things in your life that don't need to be there. And my wife and I, we've been through this whole uh, thing about, you know, uh, living a more simple life, or living s simplicity, a life of, of more simplicity. And we started it when we moved to Oregon, where we went to all the stuff that we had in our garage. And we realized that there's a lot of stuff that we have that we hold on to. But really, we need to let those things go. And so the, the altar, as soon as you walk into the tabernacle, that altar represents that. Then you get to the, the wise virgins and them trimming their lamps. That's also a representation or a call from God to me to say, there are times in your life where there are things you need to let go of. You need to sacrifice those things. And let me have those. And then not only that, it was... What totally blew me away in this, in this whole thing is the connection between, uh, where is it? It says, um, so this is the parable of the 10 virgins is right after 
Matthew 24, talking about the end of times, talking about how we can be ready. So it gives us those two parables, the parable of the, the wise virgins and then the parable of the talents. And in Revelation, I want to read you something because this is totally neat. You, you read Exodus 27, where it talks about how the, the priests had to maintain, one of their jobs was to maintain the- Are you going to Revelation 3.18? Nope. No. Nope. Oh, you're not. Okay. You'll see. You'll see in a second. So the oil was supposed to be pure and it was supposed to be maintained by the high priest. The high priest would go in and would have to do chores, so to speak. And hey, Rob, I don't want to interrupt your thought, but for some reason, your volume has changed to where I'm barely hearing you. So I don't know what happened. Is anybody else seeing that? I'm... Is everybody hearing Rob? I'm not hearing him as well. I don't know what happened. Oh, strange. I hear you fine. You kind of blocked- You're hearing me fine. Okay, I don't know why, but my volume on my phone changed. Someone tried to call me and then the sound changed. And so for some reason, now okay. I am not so I'm seeing Naomi hearing saying, you oh, as okay. well. It's like, it's very faint. I can hear good. Okay, everybody's hearing you good. Just keep going. I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Or maybe, can <laughs> okay. you drop and then come back? Me? Yeah. I, everybody, oh, everybody, well, it's better now. I can hear you both. Okay, so it looks like we're back up to good. But, I'm just having a hard time hearing you, and I can't respond if I can't hear your, okay. um, your okay. comments. Yeah, they're Sorry. hearing me fine. So, um, Go ahead. Just keep, keep going. I'm going to read your lips. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do hear that, too. Pat, you're a little bit muffled. Ever since that call happened, it, like, it's like you disappeared, and then when you came back, it was... It, the audio wasn't as good. Yeah, when my phone rang for some reason, okay, um, it changed everything. So um, try dropping and coming back. I'm sorry because you were making some good points, but I need to be able to hear you to be able to have the conversation with you. So try. Can you go ahead and drop and then come back? Sure. One sec. Okay. Now I'm going to invite him back again. I might have to restart the live, guys. Okay, now let's see. Go ahead and add yourself back, Rob. Here we go. Let's. Okay, talk now. Okay, can you hear me? I can barely hear you. So here's what we're going to have to do. I hate to do this, but in order to fix the sound, I'm going to stop the live, restart the live, and then it'll fix the sound on my phone. For some reason, when the call came in, it, it threw my, and I can't figure it out. I've tried every button on this thing to get it to go back. So I'm going to end the live, and we're going to come right back, everybody. Jump right back on, okay? We'll see you guys in just a moment. 